short light. A lighting scenario where the side of the face closest to camera has less light than the side away from the camera. Another way to describe this is that the shadow side of the face is closest to camera. Because the light is illuminating what appears to be the narrower side because it's away from camera, it's shorter than broad light. So let's talk about broad light. Broad light, a lighting scenario where the side of the face closest to camera receives more light. Shadows are falling away from the camera's view. The face appears broader. Let's take a moment to look at two different examples of Rembrandt light. In the broad light example, the side of the face closest to camera is fully illuminated. And then the small triangle of light for Rembrandt is actually away from the camera. However, let's switch to the short light situation. So now the side of the face closest to the camera has that triangle for Rembrandt. There's more shadow towards the camera. Here's how I remember. The area of the face that is illuminated in short light, it appears shorter. Okay, so let's take a moment to take a look at broad light versus short light and actually to explore how the relative position of the light to the face is what creates these lighting patterns. There's different reasons for using broad versus short light, uh, but a lot of times it has to do with mood. It has to do with drama. Short light is more dramatic and it's more sculptural. Others may be to flatter the face. Sometimes with a narrower face, broad light actually works better because it makes the face a little wider. Whereas with a wider face, sometimes short light works just a little bit better to narrow out that face. But really, usually it's more about the mood. There's not a right or wrong. It depends on what you're trying to do and say with your photograph. So what I want to do is I want to take a look at the difference between broad light and short light with the same lighting pattern. So we're going to compare Rembrandt in both short and broad light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate my subject here. Uh, let's rotate her three quarter back to camera. And I'm going to start with short light, short light Rembrandt. So I'm looking for that triangle. That's all I want is that triangle of light underneath the eye. Perfect. Right there. So that's going to give me my short light Rembrandt. And so as you can see, the shadows are falling toward the camera, short light. But now I want to create broad lighting. I want the shadows to fall this way. So what I've got to do is I've got to completely reposition my light. So we're going to move it around and I'm going to create Rembrandt again, but this time the shadows are going to fall away from the camera. Great. So exact same thing as I just did, but it's in a completely different position. For the sake of your view, I'm just going to fix, move this around so you can see it a little bit more cleanly. Great. So now, same thing. You see the same triangle of light underneath the eye, but it's on the opposite side. The Rembrandt and the shadows are away from the camera. So it's less dramatic because there are, there's less shadows and it looks a little less sculptural. So to wrap this all up, lighting patterns are about the shape of the shadow on the face, but this could be in short light or in broad light positions. So take a look at the photos here. It's all of the lighting patterns we just talked about, but you can see a version in broad light and in short light to compare the effect.